Hey folks, good afternoon. Welcome to the webinar today. My name is Stephen Vetterl. I'm one of the managing partners here at FXES Trader. It's uh, Thursday, the 11th of July. Hopefully everybody's had a good trading day if you were trading today. Certainly have had some wildness after the FOMC comments, which I'll make some reference to towards the end of the webinar. Uh, but again, welcome. Um, we're going to do the webinar a little bit different today because I've had some excellent information come out uh, in a recent conversation with uh, uh, the CEO of Market Delta. Uh, they've released a new algorithmic based um, version of the footprint chart and <laughs> a newer version of Market Delta uh, that has allowed us for the first time ever to use the power of an algorithm to see what's called an imbalance. So. Uh, that coupled with a number of questions I've received uh, since the last webinar, um, I kind of changed the presentation around a little bit to address more of the questions that I got. I figured we'd you know stay on this introduction to the footprint subject um, since it did garner a fair amount of questions from uh, not only Twitter followers and so forth. But uh, if you guys, guys are new to my new series of webinars. This is the second uh, of a second webinar in a series of four. Uh, my name is Steve Vetterl. This is the website. If you guys want to check out um, anything on us, I would suggest scrolling to the bottom. <clears throat> you can take a look at a bio on us, who we are, so forth. Um, the disclaimer, as I try to show at the beginning, just see so a lot of the disclaimer stuff is just required. <laughs> But <clears throat> most importantly, the CFTC rule here, um, you know, there is risk of loss in trading futures, as we all know. So I don't spend too much time on disclaimers, disclosures. If you want to take a closer look at us as a firm or us or me or my bio, you can take a look at my LinkedIn page. Um, we have everything broken down. You can take a look at my Twitter page, a fair amount of followers. Post a lot of real-time information on there as well. Um, but let's go ahead and get into this, kind of go through what we're going to do. Um, the Typically with the ground rules I like to set, if you guys have any questions on anything, feel free to type them in at any point. We are going to record this. This is actually being shot in Camtasia Studio 8, um, and I'm going to edit it, and we'll upload it to YouTube just as we've done with the two other videos. I would encourage you to watch. Uh, so you guys will see in this webinar presentation, I'm going to come to this more of an angle uh, as a trader. But if you guys don't know my background, I've been trading for quite a while. Um, I have just recently been working with Market Delta to earn what's called a uh, preferred educator role with both them and Mirrors Futures. I'm going to be profiled on Trader Kingdom uh, next quarter. Uh, and I'm going to be doing some webinars for Mirrors and the Trader Kingdom group on specifically just the footprint chart and uh, some of the newest stuff that just come out the last couple days on the Delta imbalance, which we're going to talk about today. Um, but as just some ground rules for the webinar, can I get uh, a sound check? Let's see, it looks like we've had a couple people enter the webinar late. So if you guys would, please just give me a yes that you can hear me okay. I don't sound too loud or anything. Uh, if you guys are just joining us late, I encourage you to go to our website. You can go down to the bottom, click on the disclaimers, disclosures, look at my LinkedIn profile, read the bio, any of that stuff. Follow me on Twitter if you wish. Um, get a feel for what I do for the folks and students of our company. But the I think the reason that Market Delta and some of the other groups have come to me to join their preferred provider organization uh, and a lot of their trading and coaching groups is because um, hopefully I'm establishing myself as the uh, footprint expert. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit. And we'll go into the examples of how the footprint actually would have helped you a whole bunch today, especially on the long side. Had a fair amount of chop coming out of uh, some of the comments from Bernanke yesterday that gapped the market up big, but we'll go ahead and take a look at the footprint and some of the clues that it gave us uh, as far as being on the right side of the market. So um, one thing I always do at the beginning of <clears throat> my webinars, I want to take a quick poll. If you guys would, please <clears throat> let me know who has traded futures before and whether or not you're using Market Delta. <clears throat> so you could put in yes, yes, or no, yes, or you know, be more detailed if you wish. That way I can feel that uh, you know, I'm, I'm catering a presentation to folks that are either not using it and want to learn, or they've traded futures before, you know, whether or not you've been successful or not, um, so forth. But as you're going through and, and, and answering that, 
we're going to uh, go through a little bit of the overview. So we're going to define the footprint. Uh, we're going to go through why it's important to understand how it tracks order flow, which is really everything. Um, quite frankly, the order flow was a tremendous insight into today as to the movements that uh, the market has made. But what I often like to establish the footprint is is it's a sort of a when to trade. You know, most of the indicators that many of us have been taught over a long period of time, they will tell us where to trade. But once you get to those levels of confluence, whether you're using, you know, Keltner channels, Bollinger bands, support and resistance lines, you're using volume nodes off of a composite, uh, whether you're looking at other types of indicators like a CCI or an RSI or stochastics, almost all of that stuff, Fibonacci, uh, tells us or in the confluence of those things where to trade they don't tell us when and I think the footprint is one of the very few things out there that can teach us the when so as you see here the goal while we're learning this and while you're using the footprint is always to determine whether trading activity is drying up whether it's being facilitated as we certainly saw today with an increasing pace at the extreme price going up <laughs> But the key thing is just looking at it, uh, you know, whether it's <clears throat> being facilitated at a one price extreme or another. So, um, and as I've had a request, and I'll, yeah, I'll probably typically do the continuing theme, I'll offer my six steps to consistent profitability more towards the end. And then the cool part that I'm looking forward to is getting into the delta imbalance, uh, which is sort of like my own little built in algo. <laughs> seeing uh, some tips uh, of imbalances in order flow, which I think is slick. So keep in mind, if you are looking um, forward to the end of this webinar, um, you are going to need the new beta version of Market Delta. Um, and you can just go to their website and download it. The beta is typically a button that's below the regular download, and you can install it. <coughs> and it'll offer the flexibility that you'll begin to see when I show my live charts. So let's go ahead and get into this. And we're, I want to keep this to about an hour. So if you guys have questions, you know, we'll try to get them answered towards the end. Feel free to type them in at any time as they come up. So the important thing about <coughs> the footprint is that it improves transparency. And really, you know, improved transparency leads to better trades. So the chart provides traders with a better organized price and volume data and it helps to uncover patterns and opportunities. So it's also used to conform or deny trading ideas, as, as I call that in my when, and reflecting market psychology as well. So I should have turned my phone off. <laughs> but um, looking at um, you know, some of the benefits of the footprint, obviously tracking order flow is the most important, um, combining the price with total volume creating, you know, again, that transparency for short-term rotations, the multiple chart types, so you can set it up for anything you wish. Uh, I use a five-tick PNF chart on my footprint, which I'll show you. Um, it allows you, again, to answer that when, executing with greater precision, seeing when <clears throat> the bid versus the offers hit. Uh, that will give you confidence. It helps filter out the noise and the transparency is you know just helping you execute better so with the history of the footprint at least as far as I'm concerned I've been trading futures since 2006 uh, I've been consistently profitable for about the last five and a half years taught a number of students to trade using the same methods um, but I really kind of got into the footprint by accident and I'd always been a huge um, uh, Peter Stettelmeyer fan, and I've written uh, a number of the books that uh, Jim Dalton has written on market profile. And I, I've always known that in, in the end, uh, the price action and more importantly, the order flow will is the most important thing to learn as a trader. So when they came out with a footprint, I said, hey, this is this is fantastic. It allows me to see inside the bar. And, you know, you can read a candle chart. But being able to see inside it and see the execution that's going on, I think brings a lot to the table as far as helping uh, execute with a greater precision. So let's talk a little bit about order flow, uh, and then I'll get into some examples uh, of the footprint, kind of give you a feel for it. The 
Most important thing with order flow is, is it refers to how the orders are coming into the market, so how they're being filled. So you know, whether you're executing at the offer or on the bid, um, the order flow is real time. It is presented in a much different fashion than a time and sales stream. And the problem I've always had with traditional time and sales windows is the data just moves too fast to comprehend. And you know it's gone in a flash as you can see here and you can't see it anymore. Where is the, with the footprint chart it's aggregated. So this diverges radically from traditional price patterns and or indicator based analysis. So the one great thing I love about the footprint is there's no attempts to either over or under simplify it. It is what it is. It's just showing you exactly what executes. Um, now keep in mind, <laughs> as one of the questions I got last week, that this is not a trading system. Okay, it offers insight into it, but the red or green colors that you'll see, you know, which indicate different types of heavier volume, whether it be on the bid or ask, is not a um, you know, sort of a red light, green light trading system. So I, I caution anybody that is not familiar with the footprint of using it in that fashion without being educated on it. So, um, but again, it uh, it integrates all the data and uh, avoids that TNS screen uh, that I always hated in the past. So, um, what I always like to say is that the footprint is where the aggressive trade is taking place in a fast moving market where there's a lot of energy. So, I mean, obviously, it's going to show you where the chop is, and it's easy to spot chop in the market. But once we had breakout, like we did this afternoon after we chopped around most of the day after a large gap up, you very clearly could see in the footprint where that energy came into the market. So, as you can see at the bottom of this here, a lot of the you know profile or support and resistance analysis and so forth, um, those are macro, big picture stuff and they provide the where to trade but again the footprint excels is showing when so let's get a little bit into that and I, I hope that answered your question Martin of order flow so <clears throat> this is my five tick reversal PNF footprint chart of the ES this is the S&P e-mini contract that trades on CME the <clears throat> key thing to understanding this and I will caution you is if you're new to this type of chart there's a lot of stuff on the screen most of it most of the time is not important to note okay what is important to note is <clears throat> you know how the footprint you know how it operates how it works um, but most of the data that is showing up in each of these what they call footprints or blocks if you will is not as important as you know being able to pick certain tips out of here so I have a tendency to teach the footprint chart a little bit different uh, I think most people that see this chart and are fairly new to this type of charting are very confused by it I say you know what it's actually fairly simple to use if you just focus on looking for exhaustion looking for chop and looking for potential reversals so that's what I'm gonna teach you guys today and if you're <clears throat> wondering what all this stuff is let's start off a little bit by just looking at it so this is just a simple representation at this particular tick this particular box of what the bid versus the ask was or what the bid versus the offer was so the bid being on the left the offer being on the right and the amount of colors or the strength of colors is different volume at those prices so you can see with the darker red colors <clears throat> this was you know much more volume executed on one side versus the other hence the shading of the darker or lighter colors whereas something like a dark green as you can see here at the top <clears throat> of the 1584 area um, was heavily on <clears throat> the uh, offer side of this particular trade and very little executing on the bid uh, versus the offer so it will always paint the bar in green for that type of uh, size and execution the other thing to note <clears throat> is that it is also prints a regular candle so you know the big <clears throat> red candle that you see here is a down bar 
uh, or the green bar that you see in the previous four as up bars. Um, but I always like to explain that, you know, and, and don't pay, at least as far as an intro to this, don't pay too much attention to this box here. It's just more of the bid versus ask volume. A lot of this is the same kind of stuff that shows up on your dome or shows up on uh, the, and this is much more irrelevant because there's a lot of false bids and offers put in to play games in the system. What actually executes is what you see showing up in these boxes as far as volume. That is the most important because it's where the aggressive buyers versus sellers uh, are actually executing and not what's flashing across your dome right now. But, you know, this is the price scale on the right. At the bottom, um, as far as today's discussion, I'm really going to talk, talk about the delta, which is the actual count of each bar, either positive or negative in terms of volume. So as you can see, these particular four green bars that printed, you had <clears throat> This is the delta, net positive delta for these bars, whereas the delta was negative. So there were more sell orders in these bars, obviously, than there were the buys on the previous. And this one big red bar uh, was obviously a significantly more selling. So I always try to tell people when they're first learning the footprint, you know, always have that delta uh, net of the bar calculated at the bottom and always be paying attention to the delta for the day. So in this particular case, we had had <clears throat> a pretty down day. The delta, as you can see at the bottom of the screen here for the day, uh, was increasing in severity, um, and then you know tailed it off, tapered off a little bit, and then got worse. Obviously, in this down bar, so it helps gauge you know what's being executed on the buy versus sell side uh, throughout the course of the day. So what else is relevant to um, at least an, an initial understanding of the footprint? is that a lot of times when you see a zero by something at the top, <clears throat> whether it be a smaller number like a zero by three you see here, or maybe something like a larger size like a zero by six, six, four, these are telling you that for this particular bar, under normal circumstances, you've had a complete auction, okay? Whereas something like an 83 by 872, you see at the top of the following bar here, and I hope you can see this okay with my arrow pointing is probably kind of small on your screen, but <clears throat> the this is more of a representation of an unfinished auction. So if you look back, and you know the, the key thing is is most of this stuff is really irrelevant as a whole, but the important things to look at in each bar are you know not only in its comparison to the the bars printing, whether it be an up bar that's green or a down bar that's red. But the most important things I try to gather from each of these footprints is what's going on inside the black boxes that you see in each bar, which is the highest volume in the bar that's being executed. So in this particular case, <clears throat> we'll try and put you know a little bit of this learning into, into some practical. We had a market that was trending up uh, on this particular bar, had a fairly complete auction at this particular time. Uh, and you keep in mind as a, as a point and figure chart, this will <clears throat> always reverse to a new bar uh, once you've had what's called a five tick reversal. And you know, some people use a four, some people use a six, but I actually found it uh, more beneficial to just meet in the middle with a five tick reversal. This is commonly the type of time frame that is most used when looking at the footprint. And especially with the brand new edition of the Delta Imbalance uh, footprint type that was uh, just released a few a couple days ago, it, it will it, it's much easier to see when I start to show you some of that new stuff why the, you know a zero by five <clears throat> was the top of that particular auction why it was complete in that most of the relationships below that between the bid and the offer um, this was more of an exhaustion move so we <clears throat> moved back down notice when we ticked over to the next bar here and we came back down towards this area this is where the high volume node black box uh, outline becomes important because we pulled back right to some of the highest volume of that previous bar or maybe there was several uh, boxes next to it on these previous bars you can't see on the screen that were also outlined 
uh, with a black border as well. And looking at you know buying pullbacks in this particular case, if maybe this was a breakout, uh, the footprint really helped someone see that you know there really wasn't much on the offer down here, and the bids and just started getting hit, and you can just see all the way up in volume. Uh, all of these bids <clears throat> getting hit and uh, the <clears throat> there was really not you know any any significant uh, volume showing up on the offer so but again we got to the top of this bar saw that activity at that particular point had dried up <clears throat> you know we had a pretty extended move um, I don't know what the mood of the day was I'm just trying to show you guys some examples but I'm assuming the mood of the day is we come out of some period of chopper balancing at a lower price. You know, the stops are piling up. Uh, the footprint's really good at showing you know, where potential stops get run, especially from an exhaustion standpoint. Uh, today being another great example of that I'll show you as well. But following through this back down, again, printed out, came back down, tested the node uh, of the <coughs> black barred box bounced back up again <clears throat> continued to move upwards now notice a little anomaly that printed here um, in that really was a number of of volume going off and it was beginning to dry up again so you know in 1586 this particular point was actually a very big area in the market um, so <clears throat> we had pulled back uh, and there's a little indicator there that uh, that shows me there's a, a potential for what's called a delta divergence, which I'm not going to get into today. But if you're wondering what the red arrow is, uh, it's a custom indicator I built into the footprint to show a potential exhaustion or reversal in volume. So once that showed up and the high node volume <clears throat> was at the top of this, if we were to get underneath this particular area, um, which was you know the center the you know volume point of control if you will for this particular bar um, you really had a pretty good shot at a short at this point and I would have stayed short just as long as the footprint or my other charts would have shown me that we were not going back up and testing this high volume node for this bar on any of the successive bars that printed after that so if somebody had gotten short seeing this divergence seeing maybe some other things in confluence and other charts but seeing the nice confirmation that the footprint provided could have gotten short I mean you could have taken you know had a pretty decent trade on this knowing that all the folks that got long here or were buying into this spike up this was going to be a pretty big area that many of them were going to be placing their stops so as algos love to terrorize all the stops that build up in the market the footprint helps you see how that really came down but you know again there was some support at some of these higher brackets now in this particular example you can't see what's passed in the previous bars but <clears throat> I know for a fact there was just a tremendous amount of volume nodes that had printed you know outline with the black border here on previous bars so no surprise we came back down nothing was showing as any kind of significant size in the order flow and we went back up and tested this upper area so as we begin to balance so a, a few things to kind of take away from this example and I'll go into a couple others but the order flow was <clears throat> through the tops of these brackets it was increasing and every time we tested lower there was really nothing uh, as far as orders at that point so you're thinking well why wouldn't I just continue to be you know looking for pullbacks to buy along well you would but the fact that we had uh, a fairly significant size bar print up here you know and it's always tough with a lot of this stuff that I'm pretty sure this in Delta imbalance the the newer footprint type is going to help answer is you know we don't know whether it's shorts covering or if it's initiative buying uh, up at a lot of these exhaustion moves but being able to see imbalances as a percentage of the top bars uh, execution in relation to the prints below it or the bar just above it which I'll show you on the imbalance that'll actually help us see more into what's going on by potential big um, buy or sell orders um, from some sort of 
<coughs> high frequency trading system. So I, I'm obviously excited with this new and I'm going to begin to test this out as we go but let's just go through and uh, take a look at some more of what the footprint can teach us. Let's go over to the next slide. Um, now there are three <coughs> basic type of patterns that I look for in the footprint and this one <coughs> which is more of an informational snapshot here <coughs> the you know looking at <coughs> you had the market going through a bunch of chop okay but as you can see here the second time we came down we showed a lot less sell orders on <coughs> on the bid and you know the 166 by 9 and then the the 26 you know this suggests really the selling was drying up it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to bounce back up but it just tells you that at this particular point you know if you're looking at getting long on you know maybe some test a few ticks underneath a particular support <clears throat> level that we were probably on in this case that there was really nothing down there uh, on the offer probably fairly safe bet if you're seeing that and there's another number of other types of confluence in the area you could probably get long on this type of move down and whether you'd have gotten a fill and been quick enough for it I don't know but in terms of just understanding the footprint um, you know it's given a good indication so <clears throat> it makes it easy to compare uh, subsequent moves in the same direction but the you know the lack of new selling activity <clears throat> preceded um, you know new buying energy that came into the market as you can see by much larger volume <clears throat> on the bid as we moved up so they were hitting the bids certainly all the way up through this bar uh, and on so the reversal is an example of and in some cases I, I like to call it a reversal exhaustion move whether it be up or down uh, you can see how there was really nothing down here on the footprint now you're probably thinking <clears throat> Well, you know, if I can see inside these bars on the footprint, and couldn't I see that on the volume of candle? Well, you can. I mean, both of these red candles were, you know, finishing up somewhere in the, the same spot. But unless you were smart enough to have caught a probably ridiculously fast moving time and sale screen, you'd have had no way of knowing on either of these down bars that this one had a lot less activity at the bottom of the candle wick. So, you know, and the footprint would have answered that. <clears throat> so, the, you know, and here, here's, here's another good example. I've just cut this out <clears throat> just recently. I like this particular move. Um, you know, they spent a number of time over these previous bars chopping around coming into this example. Um, and then all of a sudden, <clears throat> you know, we came down off this and then just a heavy bid here at 27 and you know the, the buyers are really trying to you know keep this from coming down and what you can't see in the rest of these bars is that you know we moved up pretty heavy from this point because of the size of that so as I often say try not to pay too much attention to every print it's not as important but just catch little hints off the footprint of you know a potential reversal or a large order coming in in this particular case uh, where it was significantly greater size than any of the orders coming into this that puts a bunch of support in there so the footprint I like to say can be can be twofold not only telling you when to trade <coughs> but keeping you in the trade so somebody that was you know heavily long and you know, maybe they were long from um, you know a couple of points lower than this and they were using the footprint correctly um, you know probably wouldn't have taken uh, an additional scale because they saw that large bid hit at 27 and it kept them confidence to stay in the trade so that alone if you do nothing with the footprint other than help you stay in a trade uh, is far more uh, worth it than anything I can use as far as that so let's let me jump to another example here. <clears throat> and one thing I would encourage, because you'll often find in many of my webinars, I have a tendency to sort of jump around with different examples and then show live screens and things like that. It is always um, 
always good to you know jump on Market Delta's site, you know, click on the um, you know the products or the support or the teach buttons on their homepage, and go through some of the PDFs that they have. You can watch some of the videos that Trevor shot. Uh, there's a couple of other experts that have shot some videos on that, and you know, really get a feel for you know comparing the different price sizes and the volume nodes of both the bids and the offers that are hit. Um, but this is a great example of an exhaustion print. And we had a fairly decent amount of balance or chop, if you will, that took place on previous bars to this example. But then we had an absolute short squeeze that took, took off. And you can see, I mean, look at the sizes of some of these numbers that are printing all the way up. So, I mean, the shorts are getting squeezed and they're being forced to cover. And you, and you can see that just in the style of how this volume begins to hit. And then we spent some time, <clears throat> and then we went up, and what I like to call the final burst. And this was your first indication here that we had an unfinished auction. More than likely, we were going to rotate a little bit back down and potentially pop back up. But when we had a pretty big number hit up here, <clears throat> um, you know, there was really nothing left. Uh, and that was this was actually an excellent place to short. It paid off quite well um, from that point. The... Um, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily, the size of the print, uh, lead to <clears throat> any, you know, um, any tor sort of, you know, like, information on, you know, it, if it was over 1,800 or if it was over 3,000 or 5,000. This isn't necessarily, you know, there's not any size volume that I'll look at to be on alert. I mean, certainly 1,800 is is large for um, a, a zero buy type of print, um, you know, and it, it helped <clears throat> in fine tune that. Looking at, um, and in this particular example, we had also had, um, which you can't see at the bottom of this uh, particular screenshot I, I cut, but the delta for the day had started to roll down pretty heavily. So you can use the two of those in tandem as we had gotten into <clears throat> um, really just exhausting the shorts uh, up on this squeeze move we knew that you know the 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 uh, <clears throat> we had some drying up going on here and then we popped back up had the exhaustion move with the uh, 0 by 1843 and then spent a little more time chopping before we actually had a pretty big sell off so <clears throat> you can use the uh, the daily delta to you know run in tandem with these moves Take a look at the next one. <clears throat> the other pattern <clears throat> that I like to look at when it comes to um, legitimate uh, reversals is what's called an up move. So as you can see here, despite significant volume on the ask price, <clears throat> market orders to buy were unable to push past this level. And this is really just due to you know an equal or greater number of limit orders to sell but look what happens after all this volume executes in the green circle here look what happens in the subsequent up bars uh, on this reversal <clears throat> you know we had less buying activity uh, a strong suggestion that at least on those bars that the market would not move higher so we would want to continue if we're short at this point to look to see what's executing up here and we continue to have lower and lower <clears throat> highs and then eventually as you could probably tell from here there had been with a lot of the the, the buyers that had gotten along <clears throat> or the shorts that had gotten squeezed on this up move you probably had a pretty big amount of sell orders underneath this line that I'm pointing the arrow at so especially since you had a whole bunch of volume building above this line, the footprint does an excellent job of seeing, okay, well, each time we had a peekaboo at the top, there really wasn't much executing as far as order flow. And as long as, you know, we're not seeing that uh, anything going off uh, and lifting bids up at those points, you know, the footprint can help you stay short. And sure enough, as, you know, this example, is you know, too hard to do small screenshots, but... We had a pretty significant drop from this point of almost 15 points over the next two hours. And uh, so, you know, it's kind of one of those things where if you're not using the footprint, you're probably like, hey, you know, I'm, 
I got short and you know let's just say this was the 1620 area for a matter of example and you know <clears throat> had a nice exhaustion move here and I got short um, you know we chopped around a lot you're not seeing the you know the order flow that's printing in because you're not using the footprint you have a hard time staying in this trade you're like well geez you know we're just not selling off or not selling off should I hold this trade short and whereas if you have the footprint you're like well hey look at that every time we're peeking up there nothing's going off and uh, sure enough you know every time we go up it's a <clears throat> you know back up to this level let's say the 1620s or you know 161975 or whatever where there's nothing up there so it helps you know build confidence in staying in the trade so <clears throat> so so Greg the and I'll just answer this question now since we're on the subject. Greg's question was, so you're saying large bid causes you to scale out of a long? Um, not necessarily. It, <laughs> the, the problem with most questions that would be very general in nature about how I would have, um, you know, let something execute in a particular trade is there's a pile of other factors that would go into whether I could answer that yes or no. I mean, I've, I have eight screens of charts, and you know, half of those are for the ES, <clears throat> which is the main contract I trade with our uh, with our trading room folks and our students. But the you know, there could have been other factors um, that it would have contributed to you know that type of movement. So, and and I can detail that with. Some more of today's examples, cause it was, you know, it was today's trade. It's much more in the mind, uh, especially if you were paying a lot of attention to the candle movements toward the end of the day. I'll show you how the candles, and then we can move into just what happened in the footprint. There's actually some pretty good examples today of what I'm talking about. But just you know, going through the, some of the slides here, we're almost done in any of this stuff. But let me jump into the. Um, the actual software here and I'll show you guys what went place today <clears throat> now keep in mind the movement that took place in the market um, let me just jump back to the can you guys see this new screen I brought up if you could just type in a quick yes make sure I know that uh, go to webinar can be kind of finicky sometimes and uh, when I jump real quick to another screen, sometimes it doesn't show. Okay. All right, good. So that's my... Um, if you see the screen go white, uh, it's because I actually have the data turned off to Market Delta right now so that I can show a frozen screen uh, without having data, um, you know, go forth. But uh, what you're seeing on the left here, if you're not familiar, this is a market profile chart. And <clears throat> let me just grab my little drawing tool here. <clears throat> the this is the RTH session, which is the regular trading hour session uh, for the ES. This is the e mini. Uh, this is the Globex session to the left. So I'll have a split profile. So just taking a quick look at you know what took place today on the profile, <clears throat> you can see over here to the right a candle chart. So <clears throat> and I can get into if you guys have questions later what a lot of this other stuff is. But for the purposes of teaching the footprint. I always like to start off with looking at broad market structure uh, and the profile is one of the best to do that. Looking at what took place during the Globex session uh, as not necessarily an indicator of what's going to happen but just to see the, the distribution. So with the candle chart that you see on the right, we had had a fair amount of chop. Let me just grab my pen again. Fair amount of chop inside this whole area. We gapped up significantly based on the comments, and so did almost everything in uh, risk asset land, uh, based on Bernanke's comments that they're at least looking to continue QE and not do any form of tapering. Um, I was really looking for an outside in trade, and the footprint really showed us today that that probably wasn't going to happen <laughs> because any time that we got back down um, to the 1661 area. I mean, they were hitting the bid huge down here. So, <clears throat> which no surprise, I had mentioned to some of our students that, you know, we've got a little bit of a ledge here. Uh, I would expect us to at least make some sort of attempt to try and get down and fill the ledge, but that the action on the footprint down here at the bottom 
was going to be a real good insight as to whether or not we'd see any more of any larger gap fill attempt, which is statistically very, very low percentage based upon how much we gapped up. And I can get into stats at some point in a later webinar, which I'm actually going to do a whole webinar on stats. Uh, we've got them coming out of our ears over here. But it, as far as understanding gap statistics for the day, um, you know, I think it was important to show you guys the, the broad structure of the market. <clears throat> and you know how it played out in a lot of the chops took place and then the volume that came in <clears throat> in a fairly significant way just continuing to barbecue the shorts today so with all that in mind if we take a look and we just drag the footprint chart over into the window as well <clears throat> and we can see here there we go so let me just expand this out so this is the footprint chart and if you're wondering this is the new market delta uh, beta version software this is being fed real time by CQG it's being backfilled by DTNIQ feed which in my opinion are two of the best um, I'm also a big fan of Zenfire if you guys uh, any guys have accounts at Mirrors Futures or some of the other Zenfire related firms um, I'm a big fan of that stuff as well but <clears throat> the Nobody can compete to DTN as far as having the tremendous daily um, minute data that I think is so critical to volume analysis going back to any particular date. And uh, <clears throat> they're also one of the most affordable by far. So these are being fed with that kind of stuff. You can see here at the bottom and maybe kind of hard to view, but the delta for the bar is at the top. The delta for the day you can see calculating at the bottom. <clears throat> so we had come in to the, um, <clears throat> and, I, and I guess you could just look back, but essentially we had come in to most of the day just chopping around. Um, here's one thing I like to see. When we came down and tested the 1663 area, look at all the money that hit in volume and execution. I mean, we had a lot of flow coming in and then we had nothing below it so that told me that there's a whole bunch of people down there um, hitting the bid and I was <laughs> you know if I had not seen that I probably would have attempted to short a break but the footprint chart told me otherwise it said stay off that and because uh, somebody came in with you know or a group of orders came in with fairly significant size down here. Let me just grab my pen. If you guys can't see this, <clears throat> keep in mind I'm learning how to be a presenter here, so bear with me. But the 149 by zero, um, after such a large order flow above it, uh, pretty much told me that they were coming in and hitting the bid. So, and as is no surprise, there was just an absolute pile of stop orders pretty much in this whole area and we just blasted through them all. Now, the great thing about the footprint is once you get past this type of move, you want to pay attention to one, not only where is the black bar outline, where's the high volume of the bar, okay? So we can see that's down there at 64.50. Once we've moved up, <clears throat> you want to pay attention to just generally, you know, what any sort of imbalance of, uh, of numbers we're printing. Uh, this stands out, 48 by 20 stands out right there. Probably, uh, you know, we're going to go back down and test that. We chopped around for a little bit. And just keep in mind, the shorts were on the run today, and the footprint absolutely agreed with that. And look at that. Every time we came back down, anywhere near this 48.20, there was nothing down there. Nobody was hitting the offer down there. And we just kept chopping around and getting squeezed. So, again... Another example of an exhaustion move, and I actually took this one short. Didn't get much out of it, but I saw the exhaustion, took a short, was lucky to get a partial fill. It moved down a little bit, not much. But, you know, notice when you see that type of <clears throat> sized print in order flow, if you're short, you want to just continue to see any time it's peeking back up that area, nothing's really going off. So it gives one confidence to stay in the short, albeit, 
you know, there are so many shorts that got barbecued today and so many funds that are short out there. I wasn't expecting any significant retrace. So <clears throat> let's let the footprint be, you know, just our guide, our gauge, if you will, for helping us to see, you know, what's going on. Now, if I was to, let me just get rid of this pen. If I was to close these bars up and just turn it into a regular candle chart, okay? Let me just uh, scroll this down. <clears throat> So I'll ask this question of the group. Do you think now that what you've learned you'd have the confidence to know whether or not we were going to break out above this level or if we were going to continue to chop? So it's, you know, it's a rhetorical question, but I want you guys to think about what's going off at the top, you know, what's the reversal pattern look like, you know, what kind of volume nodes that are printing. And it's actually kind of cool because when you <clears throat> you tighten up this footprint chart and turn it into a you know an old fashioned candle chart you can see the volume boxes that have printed so if you want to sort of get a different feel for how that order flow is coming out look how right here the high volume bars and I know this is probably tough to see but look how the high volume bars in this particular area um, were at the top Look at how the high volume nodes on these the black uh, bar portion of this lower green candle was at the bottom. It's telling you that there's bids being hit, and you know if you want to expand it out, you can certainly see the actual numbers of the order flow that hit. But you know just look at it from just the pure simplicity of how this chart's showing you here. You know had a Doji candle, just typically an indecisive candle print, albeit it's a five tick reversal. So you're not going to read that much into that like you would a daily doji but you know we had some delta divergence stuff down at these bottoms that told me hey you know it doesn't look like we're going down uh, on any of these recent prints we're probably going up so if you want to you can expand it out and see inside the footprint and it'll show you all that so let me just revert back here <clears throat> and All right, uh, let me just see if I've covered everything I want to cover. So we have, if anybody's wondering, this is just a VWAP here. I know I got a question about that. <clears throat> the min and max delta and the finish, I, I'm not as concerned about you guys learning a lot of that stuff today. It's really just a, a statistical percentage of the, the buy <clears throat> volume. Uh, which I pay much more attention to as each bar prints. Um, you can also, if you want, um, you can actually change the periodicity to any type on this. Like you can look at a 30 minute chart of the footprint and you can actually look to see what's executing. So again, more of a big picture view uh, on what's executing, but I think that uh, it can help but I don't know that it does as good of a graphical representation as just the TPO charts do on just a, a regular market profile chart. Okay. And, you know, but like I said, it's, it, it's what I like to call the fine tuner of when to trade. You know, all this other stuff up here teaches you where to trade and, <clears throat> you know, certainly framing the market but you know we were in a a gap and go day so there are other gap rules that come into play that play a significantly larger role in how you should act as a trader than a lot of the footprint stuff so you know and again we're just showing you guys examples of one day so i think it's you know it, it it's important to to look at it in the aggregate but you know just for what you will, if, if if you want to go back and get more background information on the footprint, you know, I encourage you guys to go to Market Delta. You can go watch. Uh, I have a, a fairly new YouTube channel, so you can go to my YouTube channel and watch the previous footprint. But repetition 
in learning these patterns or understanding the basic structure of the footprint, you know, seeing this type of stuff over and over again will begin to solidify some of the patterns that I'd like you guys to recognize. And that's really in the beginning of the learning of this. All I would want you guys to take from this webinar is just looking at, you know, what couple of nuggets can I grab from the footprint just as I'm about to execute a trade. You know, what did it look like, you know, before? <clears throat> and so I'm going to open up um, the other screen here as well and just show you guys just quickly. Let's see if I can get this to come over into the screen. <clears throat> can you guys see this? It says a black background on it. You guys see this chart okay? I'll get to that question too, Martin. <clears throat> okay, this is, let me just jump over to this other screen here. This is the new delta imbalance. And essentially the, <clears throat> I know we're running a bit late on the time here, but I, I think this is awesome. So the new uh, market delta imbalance chart um, is named delta imbalance because it uses a familiar but different methodology for coloring the footprint volume values. And it introduces a volume ratio algorithm uh, for easy spotting of important areas of imbalance on the chart. So up to now, you know, all the footprint types offered were colored based on delta over volume at a single price. So, you know, what hit the bid uh, uh, volume uh, would be subtracted from the ask and you know, it could determine net net delta for that. So that would provide an indication of order flow at that particular price, but there was no relation to the previous price. So if it's coming down uh, in a down candle. So the new delta imbalance uses a variation and compares the bid traded volume of one price to the ask traded volume of the price located directly above it in the case of a move down. So it employs an algorithm that you can actually adjust or a percentage. <clears throat> it compares that ratio of volume between the two. And you're probably wondering, well, why, why does that matter? So the goal of the new delta imbalance footprint type is to automatically highlight imbalances between the volume traded at the price being offered and the volume traded at the price being bid. So, and, and I don't know <clears throat> because this is so new as to whether I can integrate this into my existing chart, you know, sort of put the colors, if you will, inside the existing chart, you know, thus keeping from me from having, you know, more than the 18 charts that I follow of different uh, contracts I trade. But, um, I mean, I love this. I mean, I, I'm not going to get, you know, too involved in all the cool things that showed today, but it definitely warrants some further investigation and it, it was flashing huge imbalances by the way when we came out of this chop so when we came right out of the bottom of this chop and but it showed a whole bunch of imbalances that just further um, signal that hey you know <laughs> we're, we're taking a peekaboo down here under the 63 area but uh, more than likely um, you know we're gonna squeeze so let me just uh, jump back to the uh, the slides here and I, when I test this out, you guys, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, if you guys haven't figured this out yet, I'm, I'm ridiculously anal with this stuff. And I'm going to, you know, turn this inside now, but I think it's going to be a fabulous tool. Um, a lot of the testing has also been done, even though this particular chart is set for what's called a 140% uh, balance. Um, there's a lot of new evidence to show that we can actually adjust the imbalance um, percentages to up to two to three hundred percent which is pretty slick so I'm gonna play around with a lot of that and see how that works out but uh, I just think it's gonna be an additional tool to see where the order flow really is headed but let me just jump back to the uh, the slides here and uh, go ahead and uh, answer any questions you guys have so the okay the first question is why reversal footprint instead of the price bar um, I don't have an hour to explain the answer to this. Let's just suffice it to say that some of my 
biggest trader buddies, guys that run funds and things like that, they use the footprint. They almost all use the same setup. You can certainly use it, um, but you really want to exploit the benefits of the footprint and the benefits are to actually look inside the bar. If you're looking at a five minute chart of the footprint and you're looking at the three minute or certainly the 30 minute that I had shown you, a lot of that is already represented in other types of charts that you have on your screen, like the profile, which is a 30 minute bracketed uh, uh, auction market theory frame uh, or structure of what the market is framing it out. Whereas looking at something like a five tick reversal or a four or six tick reversal gives you a better insight into what's happening <clears throat> um, and it doesn't, you know, you want to see it reverse out on a point and figure chart versus just a flat five tick range, which I know some use, but I just think I can, I glean a heck of a lot more information on order flow when I have it set up as a PNF. So the next question is, <clears throat> instead of price, uh, instead of price footprint chart, do you also use a five tick reversal for FX? Um, keep in mind that, and I'm sort of answering this question in a roundabout way, the type of markets that I like to trade are mean reverting markets, okay? The ES is a much better example, in my opinion, of a mean reversion type of market. Whereas to a lesser degree, oil, um, certainly the CL contract I trade, and you know, certainly the uh, whether it be you know spot forex or the exotics or just the big names or any of the CME traded products that represent the uh, the you know major currency pairs like the six E, which is the euro, um, or the six B or the six J, six A, which is the Aussie, uh, all the U.S. dollar equivalents of those, they. Um, they're a little different and you can use the footprint for that and I, I'm not you know I'm not saying don't but the the hints and the tips and a lot of the tricks I've taught you today they have to be adjusted for those markets does that make sense so with and probably more so with the euro because it's liquid and especially the 6e which is the euro uh, FX currency pair and uh, you know as as I do not like trading the spot forex market because it is a fragmented market and there are a lot of really schlocky brokers out there to give you rotten fills and take lots of commissions. And I far prefer, since I'm a volume based uh, trader, especially from a volume <clears throat> or a composite type of volume analysis, um, that I far prefer to trade a product that has a really liquid market. And um, you know, the ES is the most liquid uh, futures uh, contract trader in the world, uh, other than the DAX, uh, which is not traded through the CME. So, <clears throat> and that, that's a, a whole different ballgame as far as using the footprint to trade the DAX. But you can use the footprint almost equally as well trading the NQs. Uh, to a little bit of a lesser degree trading the Russell, uh, certainly trading the YM, which I do not trade. Uh, I don't trade that much Russell. I trade a little bit of the NQs. Uh, but I primarily stick to just the ES, the 6E, and, and oil, uh, which is a whole different game. But oil still does act well um, to the bigger picture volume analysis. Uh, I can't say that it acts as well with the footprint. And, and by the way, Eric, Eric's uh, one of my partners who helps me on the, the webinars here. Eric, are you seeing uh, any other questions that uh, I'm not seeing here? Okay. Okay. Any other questions we can answer for you guys? Because we're running up towards the end of this presentation. <coughs> what I would encourage you guys is I'm seeing uh, one of the questions come through in my email here. Um, I guess this gentleman was late to the webinar. The uh, trading room that we run. As you can see on the screen here, it's just a, it's a live trading room. <clears throat> I've got a number of uh, of members inside the room. Uh, we do a, a complete analysis of the market each morning, and we go through charts, everything. We put together an entire homework. Uh, if you guys have signed up for this webinar, you are offered a homework sheet uh, that uh, looks very similar to this. 
If you have not downloaded that, uh, I would highly suggest that. Um, let me just uh, sling that over if you guys haven't seen this yet, since I've gotten a couple questions about this. This is the homework sheet that we do every morning. I've done this consistently for the last six years, uh, and it is exceptionally comprehensive as to how to prepare for the trading day. I use a lot of this framework in my daily charts that I post for our members on the members only section part of my website, which you can certainly click on the top <clears throat> of my website to get into the members section if you want to take a free trial. Uh, it's actually really good stuff. Spend a fair amount of time analyzing this each day, so forth. All right, so we're coming up on an hour. Um, any other questions I can answer for anybody? Yeah, so if you guys haven't downloaded this sheet, looks like the link's still working okay. So um, go back into where you registered for the webinar. If you guys need any help with that sheet, you can always send me an email and, uh, and do all that. But I uh, want to thank you guys for joining us today. I'm going to go through and edit this. I'll put it up on YouTube and you guys can see it. But, um, you know, encourage you guys, again, if you got any questions, send me an email. It's just steve at fxestrader.com or you can contact us through the homepage of the website. And uh, thanks for joining, guys.